Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. It's good to be here, right? So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Andrew Davis, and I'm a cybersecurity expert, and I am currently a member of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group with CNCF. It is my pleasure to be here with you at KubeCon. And I'm Sandeep Kanabar, a Linux software engineer at Jen. We are excited to walk you to one of the most fundamental yet misunderstood technologies in security, TLS and MTLS. We will break down what these protocols do, why they are critical for secure communication, and how they apply especially in the zero trust model. And before we dive into the technical aspects, we would like to highlight that we both are members of the deaf and the hard of hearing working group. And so, while you see that Andrew is using an interpreter, okay, I'm using the captions on my phone to follow what Andrew's interpreter is speaking. So if you see me looking at the phone in the middle of my talk, I'm not reading my company emails, okay? Okay, so now imagine a world where every conversation, every communication, every digital thing could be eavesdropped on or tampered with. This is the reality before the advent of cryptography and secure communication protocols like TLS and MTLS. These technologies are the foundation of modern security ensuring that confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity of our digital communications. TLS and MTLS are the unsung heroes of modern security. They're like the bodyguards of the digital world, protecting our sensitive information from prying eyes and malicious attacks. But, like any bodyguard, they need to be used correctly. Unfortunately, many people don't understand these technologies, which can lead to security vulnerabilities. And that's why we're here today. We're going to take a deep dive into TLS and MTLS, uncovering their secrets and learning how to use them to their full potential. So let's go over today's agenda. We're gonna start with why we need TLS and MTLS. We are going to discuss basics of security and cryptography. We are going to talk about public key cryptography and infrastructure. The next item will be TLS, MTLS, and zero trust. And finally, we'll talk about a practical example, service meshes, specifically using Linkerd. So let's start with a critical question. Why do we need secure communication? The answer might seem obvious, but understanding the specific threats helps us understand how we can address them. First, consider eavesdropping. Without secure communication, any data transmitted over a network can be intercepted by malicious actors. This includes anything from private emails to sensitive financial data. The second issue is tampering. Even if, it, if the data isn't stolen outright, attackers can change it, which can have serious consequences. For instance, if someone intercepts and alters the transaction. Something could be easily switched during that transmission. Third, identity theft. For these, without a secure system to verify identities, attackers can impersonate others, creating a risk for anything from fraud to unauthorized access to systems. For all these reasons, secure communication protocols are not optional. They're essential, and a zero trust 
model where we verify everything and trust nothing by default, secure communication becomes even more critical. Both ends need to be confident of each other's identities and know that their communication is private and untouched. Achieving secure communication involves three fundamental building blocks, encryption, integrity, and authentication. Let's look at each one more closely. Encryption is about privacy. By scrambling data, encryption ensures that only the intended recipient can read it. So if even if someone intercepts the data, they can't understand it without the right decryption key. Integrity is about checking and making sure that the data remains unchanged from sender to receiver. We use methods like hashing to compare the data at both ends. If there's a difference, we know something is wrong. And finally, again, authentication, which answers the question, are you who you say you are? Authentication helps us prevent identity theft by associating an, associating an unforgeable identity with each party in the conversation. This is especially important in systems like TLS, where verifying the server's identity is a crucial step. Together, these three concepts become the backbone of secure communication. And the heart of secure communication is cryptography. Simply put, cryptography is the process of transforming a readable data known as plain text into unreadable data known as cipher text. That is, and the concept of cryptography is not at all new. It has been there since the time of ancient civilizations. And Ancient civilizations used substitution ciphers to transform the letters to encode messages that could only be run by someone who knew the pattern. Fast forward to World War II, and cryptography evolved into a sophisticated field with the advent of modern computer-based encryption. Modern cryptography uses complex mathematical algorithms to protect information only those who have the correct key can decrypt the data, can decrypt the cipher text back to the plain text. This process of encryption and decryption is the foundation of secure digital communication we rely on today, including TLS and MTLS. Now that we know what is cryptography, let's take it. Let's try to understand what is the distinction between a cryptography and a crypto system. There is a very small, subtle distinction, and let us try to understand that. So cryptography refers specifically to the mathematics of securing our data. It involves using our mathematical algorithms to encrypt or scramble data so that only authorized parties can decrypt it. Cryptography focuses on individual algorithms like those used to encrypt the data and verify the data integrity. In contrast, a crypto system is a broader concept. It combines cryptographic algorithms with a set of protocols and frameworks to create a secure communication system pipeline. TLS and MTLS are examples of crypto systems they use cryptography, but in addition to cryptography, they also incorporate mechanisms for key exchange, authentication, and protocol management to keep data secure throughout the entire communication process. So while cryptography gives us the tools to encrypt and decrypt data, a crypto system is a complete, secure framework that manages and applies these tools in real-world communication. So now that we know the cryptography, a crypto system, so one of the most significant advances in cryptography is the public key cryptography. And what it means is it allows secure communication between two parties who have never exchanged keys before. So in public key cryptography, each party has a key pair, a public key and a private key. The public key can be shared openly with anyone. This means if I want to send a secure message to you, I need to encrypt it with your public key. 
knowing that only you can decrypt it with your private key. And conversely, if you encrypt something, if conversely, if you encrypt something with your private key, only you could have encrypted it, because other than you, no one can do that. So public key cryptography gives us both a private communication and a way to verify identity. However, public key cryptography, also known as asymmetric cryptography, is relatively slow. So it is often used only for the key exchange rather than, rather than for encrypting the entire data. So once you exchange the key, and then you use a symmetric key. So one popular method for securing the key exchange is the Diffie-Hellman method, but there are others as well, such as the RSM-based key exchange. So these methods enable both parties to agree on a shared symmetric key which they will use to encrypt and decrypt the main communication data efficiently. So with public key cryptography, we are achieving two things. We have a secure identity verification and a secure key exchange, making it fundamental to crypto systems like TLS. So now we know that the public key, we need to verify the identity. So how do we verify the identity? That is where the certificates come, and it is known as using public key infrastructure. So public key infrastructure uses certificates to authenticate identities and establish the trust. So an X509 certificate is like a digital passport that maps a subject. The subject can be a user, server, or a device to a specific public key. Each certificate is issued by a trusted authority known as a CA. So certificates are authorized as a chain of trust. A certificate is trusted because it's issued and signed by a CA, which is itself trusted because it is certified by a higher authority all the way up to the root CA, which is self-signed and universally trusted. So in TLS and MTLS, certificates play a critical role in verifying that each party in a communication can be trusted and authenticated. So let us start by understanding what a certificate is. You can think of it as a digital passport for a website or a server that verifies its identity just like an ID card verifies a person's identity. The certificate contains critical information, including the entity's name, the website address, and the certificate's expiration date. So one of the most important pieces of information in the certificate is the public key. This key plays a critical role in secure communication because it allows anyone to encrypt the data, knowing very well that only the certificate holder can decrypt the data. The certificate holder has the private key to decrypt the data. So certificates are generally not self-issued. They are created and signed by trusted third parties known as a senior or certificate authority. These seniors act like government agencies that issue official identities. The validate the identity of the entity requesting the certificate and digitally sign it to establish the trust. So by signing, the CIA guarantees that the certificate's authenticity, it is who they say they are. There is only one exception, and that is in a development environment. When you are using a development environment, you basically begin with a self-signed certificate, which is why whenever you are developing something and testing something, and you launch it in a browser, you will see a warning icon saying that they cannot trust the certificate. Because for development, you don't need to use a trusted certificate authority, since it is just for internal purposes. So how does the certificate work? How does the validation and how does the chain work? So when you visit a website, your browser initiates a process to verify that the site is genuine and can be trusted. 
This begins with the website that is present in its digital certificate, much like you show a passport at an international border. So when you show your passport, the passport checking officer simply does not allow you to go. What he does is he scans your passport, he validates your passport. So the same way, so the same way there is a validation process that takes place. So a certificate chain is a hierarchical structure that links the server and the leaf on the workload certificate back to the trusted certificate authority or the root seed. So this root CS certificate is already pre-installed in almost all the browsers and the operating systems. So this change starts with the website certificate, often called the leaf certificate or the server or the workload. So when the client, so here is it that can I trust this certificate? Okay, and then it proceeds, so it checks who signed this certificate. So it could be an intermediate certification authority that signed it, which is again signed by some other intermediate certification authority all the way up to the root CI. So the difference is that, okay, if I have a certificate, I am the owner, and he is the intermediate certificate, he becomes the issuer. So as an owner, he issued me a certificate. So he validates my identity. Now somebody else is showing my certificate, the intermediate, they validate his identity. He goes on the way up to the root here. Now in the root here, how do you determine if it is a root here? The owner and the issuer are the same. In everywhere else, the owner and the issuer are different. In the root here, the owner and the issuer are the same. Okay? So each certificate in the chain is signed by the certificate among it. This means that every certificate in the chain validates the one directly below it, forming a chain of trust. So the intermediate certificates play an important role. They act as intermediaries that allow the root here to delegate trust without being directly involved in the issuance of each certificate. Finally, we reach the root here at the top Unlike other certificates, the root CS is self-signed, meaning the issuer and the owner are the same entity. This self-signature is unique only to root CS and establishes them as the ultimate trust anchor. Because your browser already trusts the root CS, it can use this chain to verify each certificate down to the server, ensuring a secure, authenticated connection. Transport Layer Security, or TLS, it is a protocol that leverages PKI to provide secure, encrypted communication between a client and a server. TLS is the technology that makes HTTPS possible on the web. In a typical TLS handshake, the client is going to connect to the ser server and both parties will negotiate the encryption methods. The server then presents its certificate when the client checks against the chain of trust to verify the server's identity. Once both the client and server trust each other's identities, they exchange a session key This key encrypts the actual data exchanged during the session. This process ensures that data is private and that it's being sent to and from the correct parties. MTLS, or mutual TLS, is an enhanced version of TLS. So it requires that both the client and the server authenticate each other. In TLS, only the server's identity is verified, while the client remains anonymous. In MTLS, the client also provides a certificate 
allowing the server to ve verify the client's identity. This two-way authentication is critical in environments where multiple services need to securely communicate. For example, in microservice architectures. This mutual trust helps protect against identity-based attacks and makes MTLS ideal for applications requiring stringent security like service meshes. While cryptographic algorithms may seem difficult, they are relatively straightforward to implement. But crypto system systems are complex to implement securely. A key challenge is finding a balance between security and performance. Symmetric encryption is fast and efficient, but it requires both parties share the same secret key. Asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, is slower, but enables secure communication without prior key exchange. TLS and MTLS blend these approaches by using asymmetric encryption for key exchange and symmetric encryption for the actual data transfer. Implementing these systems requires careful handling of every step from key management to authentication protocols. In zero trust architecture, every communication must be authenticated and encrypted. This model assumes that no network is inherently trustworthy. TLS and MTLS support zero trust by securing communications and ensuring that both the client and the server are verified. In zero trust, it's not enough to verify a connection once, every interaction must be authenticated. MTLS, with its mutual authentication, is especially critical here because it confirms both ends of the communication. This helps prevent unauthorized access and keeps communications secure. In Kubernetes environments, service meshes like Linkerd play a critical role in securing communication between microservices. By default, services within a cluster may communicate without encryption, which can expose sensitive data if intercepted. Linkerd addresses this by implementing mutual TLS which provides each microservice with a verified identity and ensures all communication between them is encrypted. This way, only authorized services can communicate with each other and the data that's exchanged remains secure. One of the benefits of Linkerd is that it handles certificate issuance, renewal, and validation automatically which greatly simplifies managing MTLS across all services. It's a powerful example of how TLS and MTLS principles are applied in real world environments to build a zero trust model. So in continuing to what Andrew said, while any traditional service mesh can provide a zero trust environment, some of the new approaches like the Istio ambient and MBPF based service meshes, they introduce some additional operational complexity and may not strictly adhere to the zero trust principles in the same way. Kubernetes environments, you know, are already very complex, so operational simplicity is often a priority and Lincoln's micro proxy design offers a streamlined approach, minimizing the added overhead on services. So, from a security perspective, Lincoln takes a unique approach 
by implementing a proxy in Rust language instead of C++. Mostly, C++ is used in other service meshes, and Rust is known for its memory safety guarantee. So, linking by using Rust is helping to avoid memory-related security vulnerability. In fact, the Google Chromium project found that around 70% of its senior security bugs stem from memory safety issues, which are more common in languages like C++. By using Rust, Linkerd minimizes the chances of distress, providing a more secure foundation for service communication. So, as Andrew said, okay, Linkerd handles all of the certificate generation, validation, authentication for you. So, this diagram actually explains. So, what you see in the bottom part, okay, the communication between just a client and a server, but what happens behind the scenes is shown in the upper side. So while the LinkedIn takes care of the certificate generation, issuing a token that is valid only for 24 hours as a part of security measure, okay, and then establishing the trust identity principles that we talked all about. So since LinkedIn automatically enforces MTLS in all cluster communications, including authenticating every workload in the cluster, we can identity that maps it back to the Kubernetes service account. LinkedIn automatically checks every access every single time. LinkedIn also provides an access control to allow specifying which access is okay, which access should not be allowed or should be prohibited. Overall, LinkedIn is a valuable building block for zero trust architecture. So TLS and MTLS are critical in today's security landscape. Whether it is secure in the web communication, microservices, or APIs, these protocols play a foundational role. However, there are still many misconceptions about what TLS and MTLS do. Most people think they are just about encryption, but they go beyond that. As we have seen, it's also about authentication and ensuring that both sides of the communication can trust each other. Understanding this protocol is vital for effective security. TLS and MTLS are very powerful tools, but only if you understand the roles in maintaining both privacy and authenticity. As we continue to move to a zero trust world, securing communication with TLS and MTLS is no longer an option, it's a necessity. These protocols allow us to trust the identities of the people and the systems we communicate with and keep our data safe. Knowledge of these protocols is the foundation of a secure future. By understanding how these systems work and why they are important, you are empowering yourself and your organization to build more secure systems. So thank you and we look forward to your questions. As I said, we both are members of the DAF and the Heart of Hearing Working Group. Okay, so we are working to bring out a set of accessibility and best practices on how to make conferences, events, meetings more inclusive. Okay, and then uh, we, have, uh, we have a DEI community hub that is happening just now at about four o'clock. So feel free to drop by Okay, and we have a sign language crash course that is guaranteed to be fun and learn. So if you can stop by the DEI community hub in room 255B, we would really love it. Thank you.